All right, so here's a bit of an overview of my makeup collection. So you can see my two cats over here sitting in the sun. There's a bit of a shelf that my husband built into the uh, window that lets them just basically sun themselves and get a little bit more height because cats like to be up high. Um, as for the makeup though, I've got two floating shelves right there. Those are from Ikea. I've got a clock that I haven't put batteries in in ages, so that is not functional right now. <laughs> Another mirror from Ikea. And then this little table unit here that has two drawers was from some friends. It's just an end table that they didn't need anymore, so I inherited it. Anyway, let's zoom in a little bit closer so you can see what I actually have. All right, so definitely the most interesting to me for my collection is my eyeshadow palette. So those are the most prominently displayed items that I have in my collection. All right, so looking a bit closer at the first row of palettes, they are kind of spilling over and they are piling up in front here, but I don't really know where to put any more shelves at this point, so. I'm working with what I've got. So I have the Too Faced Little Black Book of Bronzers here, the NYX Beauty School Dropout Palette. This is the Lorac Mega Pro 2. I never got the first Mega Pro and I'm going to forever regret that. This is a nice palette, but I don't feel like the shades spoke to me as much as the Mega Pro 1 did. I also have the Too Faced Nikki Tutorials Power of Makeup Collection. I am keeping this because I really love Too Faced, but I did not like this palette at all. One palette I really did like in that sort of smaller packaging is the Too Faced Stardust palette by Vegas Ney. These shadows are incredible. I'm not much of a neutral person, but these two rows here are beautiful. And then I have the most recent Marc Jacobs Holiday palette. This one was called About Last Night, and it is enormous. There's so many eyeshadows in here. And then I have three Anastasia Beverly Hills Glow Kits. I have Moonchild. Sweets, and then the one that almost no one got, Gleam. This was really pink toned, but beautiful. I then have this Urban Decay Urban Spectrum palette. The packaging is really, really obnoxious on this. It's not fun to use. Ooh, I have it upside down because I've dropped this so many times since owning it. Um, this whole, ugh, it's just kind of a mess to use. Shadows are nice, but annoying. Then I have the Too Faced Love Palette. This is also a bust for Too Faced. These shadows are just not great. But I keep it because I'm a Too Faced hoarder. I have the original Chocolate Bar Palette. This is in their bulkier packaging. You can tell because it's much fatter than the other ones. Then I have the Too Faced Semi Sweet Chocolate Bar Palette. This is hands down my favorite. Of course I bought the Chocolate Bomb On set. More cool toned, uh, a lot of pink in here, which is not unexpected. And then the Sweet Peach palette, which I got during its original launch, uh, spring of 2016. And then of course I have the Urban Decay Naked palettes. This is the very first one. This was very well loved. I've hit Pan on Toasted and Virgin, and this was my first ever actual palette. Then of course, because I love that palette so much, I bought the Naked 2. This one's a bit of a mess. The shadows kind of break and fall out all the time on me. I was not a fan of this release, but I hold on to it for consistency. I feel like because it's got family members, I need to keep it. <laughs> and then I got the Naked 3 palette. This is a specially done packaged one that I got at the Urban Decay Square One launch party in Toronto. I haven't actually used this one yet, but I did um, resell the one that I had purchased during its first launch. Uh, on a Buns trading zone. If you're in Toronto, you may have heard of it. Buns is a great way to get rid of products that you don't need anymore. I also have the Smashbox Double Exposure Palette. These can be used wet or dry and the quality is incredible. This was the best Smashbox palette that I had used, I think, because I tried some of their holiday releases before and hadn't loved them, but the formula of this is fantastic. One of the more recent palettes I have here is the Urban Decay After Dark palette. Beautiful, beautiful shades, but I do find that obviously this is not a standalone palette. You do obviously need other products to work in because they are all brights, there's no transition shades, and there's no mattes. One of my most beloved palettes is the Urban Decay Electric palette. This thing is glorious, and sadly, I think they're discontinuing it because I see it on sale all the time. If I need to make like a shocking bright look, this is the first palette I reach for. All right, move you over a little bit more. I have two palettes by Laura Mercier here. This was the original 2013 launch uh, holiday season palette for them. They have since relaunched it as a permanent product, which is fantastic because this thing is incredible. These 
eyeshadows are some of the best I have ever tried. You cannot go wrong with this palette. And then I also have a later launch, what was this one called? Artist palettes for cheek and eyes, for, sorry, for eyes and cheeks. Didn't love this one. I talked about this recently in a products I regret buying video. This chunk of color here is just useless as far as I'm concerned. The shadows are great quality. I just wasn't as in love with this color selection. Okay, next up I have a Mayron palette. I was not in love with this one. It just didn't really work out for me very well. This is the Fire palette. I find them very chalky. Then I have a Balm palette. This is the Meet Matte Nude. My aunt got this for me as a surprise. Great quality shadows, but I don't really find myself reaching for it that often. Then I have the Lorac Unzipped Gold palette. This thing is incredible, although very, very uh, powdery is what I want to say. This Unleashed color is everything. Tell you what, I am not having fun with camera angles here. It's very hard to film what's in front of me with the viewfinder on the side. Uh, so what do I have here? I have the Visart Editorial Brights palette. Fantastic palette. I always go back to this one. It is expensive, but I think it's worth the money. And then I have a ton of sleek palettes. These are one of the cheapest price point but highest quality items I think you can get at the drugstore. I know they are in the UK, but they do ship overseas for not very much. I think it might be like three or four dollars for shipping, so these are worth it to pick them up. So I have the original palette, the Sunset palette, the Matte Darks palette, the Matte Brights palette, the Acid Palette, love this one. These shades are a bit chalky, but that's just normal for neons. And then the Eau Naturelle Palette. Moving on, I have some of my Too Faced Smaller Nine Pan Palettes. This is the Sugar Pop Palette from a few years ago. The more recent Totally Cute Palette. You put your own stickers on it. And then my beloved Peanut Butter and Jelly Palette. I love this thing so freaking much. And then I have some Sonia Kashuk palettes here. This is the Ion Neutral 02 palette. And then this one is the Jewel of an Eye palette. This one was limited edition and it should not have been because these shades are incredible. I also have the Stila Mind palette, all mattes. And this orange is the shade that really drew me into it. Then I have the Becca Ombre Rouge palette, another set of matte shadows. This one is a Z palette that I've got a few shadows in here. What are these guys, actually? Oh, these are some MAC shadows that I haven't been able to put back into my MAC palace, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, MAC shadows, MAC blush, and this is a pressed pigment. Side note on these Z palettes, I don't support this brand anymore. If you want to look up controversies, just look up how crappy they treat customers. But I already have their products, so I'm not going to be like chucking them because that's a waste of money. But I won't be buying them anymore. Okay, so for MAC palettes, I have three of them. Um, I've reduced my MAC collection overall over the years, so I don't have nearly as much as I used to. This one is a, I guess it's the pink, pink and purple palette. Uh, all these shadows, obviously, are MAC. And then I have done labels for them that I just put on the front frame. They don't match up anymore, though. These used to match what the circles were, and they just don't. So this MAC palette is more of my neutrals. There we go. Hit pan on this guy. I'm still trying to finish so many of my MAC shadows just because they're some of the oldest stuff I have. This is the blue and green palette. And then now we get into Makeup Geek. So I have a full video on my Makeup Geek collection, so I'm not going to go through these two in depth, but this is my like yellows and oranges palette. This one is my purples and pinks palette. And then I have my blue and green palette. And then my neutrals. This one is kind of, it was supposed to be like white, gray, and black, but I don't have a lot of shades in that category. So this is just whatever I managed to have flow over from the other palettes. And then this one here is my Sugar Pill Shadows. This, these are some Inglot ones. This one is the Maison de Jacinthe. And then that's one of her eyeshadows as well. Okay, now for the smaller palettes, I kind of keep on the front here. This one is the Too Faced Love Flush Blush Wardrobe. This thing is enormous, like, it's huge. <laughs> I have the Kat Von D Alchemist palette. Great shades that you can use as a highlighter or an eyeshadow. I have the Smashbox Cover Shot Bold palette. Another great one. 
This is the Tarte Rainforest After Dark palette. Then I have the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Quad in the shade Rust. And then I also just keep my Inglot shadows on top. This is a 10 pen palette. I have a five pan here. This one is all matte shadows. And then I have some smaller three pan ones here. All right, moving to the top shelf area here, I have some Sephora glitter stickers that I've just never gotten around to using. Then I have the Kat Von D metal matte palette from this year's past holiday launch. Then I have the previous year's Kat Von D Beauty to Loco Remix palette. Absolutely incredible one. Love that one so much. Then I have the Kat Von D, I think this is called a Spellbinder, star studded eyeshadow book. The Too Faced, a few of my favorite things palette. This is the palette that got me stuck on Too Faced. This was a few years ago and I fell deeply in love with the brand then. Their next holiday palette was the Everything Nice palette. Same sort of layout as the previous years. Then I have a Violet Voss palette. This is the Holy Grail palette, which was a limited edition launch, but they re-released it, so I think they might still be selling this one. Then one of my favorite Urban Decay palettes. This is the Vice 3 from a few years ago. Loved the shadow collection in this one. The more recent Urban Decay Full Spectrum palette, which I always find this one really difficult to open. And it has quite a few rainbow colors in here, but there is a bit of a mix of like darker tones up there. Then I also have this past year's Too Faced Christmas in New York palette. This was the Chocolate Shop one. Oh, it smells like chocolate, so good. Then I have the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Palette, all mattes, fantastic palette. Everybody needs this one. And then the Kat Von D Pastel Goth Palette. It's pretty, but I'm not as in love with this palette as I thought it was going to be. Then I have a House of Lashes a Lash Story Book of Lashes. Oh, this makes me so excited. I am so happy to have, oh geez, everything is tipping. So happy to have this booklet of lashes. And then of course, the beloved Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance Palette. Fantastic eyeshadows. And then a lesser known one, this was the Maya Mia Palette. When she did a lot smaller palettes and her products weren't that well known, still great quality. Then I have the Tarte Graveyard Girl and uh, Palette. This is the Swamp Queen Palette. Love the shadows in here. I, I love these nine right here. I'm not as sold on the face powders, but these are fantastic. And then I have the Becca and Jaclyn Hill face palette. Love these ones as well. These blushes are incredible, as are all Becca blushes as far as I'm concerned. And then the two highlighters, Champagne Pop, and then this was Prosecco Pop. Pulled the last few out to make it a bit easier. This is the Too Faced Sweet Peach Glow Palette. Love this thing to death. Absolutely love it. And then I have the Tarte, I don't know, oh, what's the name of this guy? Pin Up Girl Palette. This was one of their holiday launches, five blushes. I love their blushes, but I feel like this packaging is just ridiculous. Like this is not convenient for anybody. And then the Tarte Off The Cuff Holiday Palette from the year before. This is great. This is convenient and easy to use. I don't know why they went to this kind of packaging. Over here is all of my foundations. And I have a lot of foundations, given that it's not something that I love the most in makeup, but I get a lot of them sent to me, so I want to make sure to use them. So the ones that I'm using currently, because I want to either test them out or use them up, uh, the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundations are the ones I'm trying to use up because I've had them for a little while. This is the stick version and then the liquid. And then one of my most recent foundations is the Inglot HD Perfect Cover Up Foundation. This one is brand new to me. I've only used it once or twice and I want to get more use out of it. And then I have a Guerlain Meteorites powder here. This was the one that looked like little snowflakes. Super expensive. I don't use it that often, but I think it's beautiful. And then these are all the foundations basically ordered from lightest to darkest. Over here is stuff that I can't really wear until the summer starts, so they're kind of like pushed to the side. So I have some Makeup Forever Water Blend, Wet n Wild Photo Focus, Too Faced Born This Way, Bourgeois Healthy Mix Serum, love that one. This is the Maybelline Dream Velvet. This one is the Quo Matte Revolution Foundation. Derma Blend, one of the best products out there, I swear. Uh, Art Deco Nude Foundation. These are my, whoops, beloved um, Boots Number no. 7 Instant Radiance Foundation. Like, phenomenal, phenomenal. And then I have an Illamasqua Skin Base here. 
the Estee Lauder Double Wear Light. Love this stuff, but it's way too dark for me right now. Another Makeup Forever Water Blend in a darker shade. I have the Boots Number no. 7 Stay Perfect in a much darker shade for me. And then the Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude Cushion Stick. Another great product, but still currently too dark for me. And then the Quo Matte Revolution Foundation number sh in the shade number two. Another two dark shade is the Maybelline Dream Cushion Foundation. All right, so those are the shelves. So we're gonna move on to the rest of the desk area here. And I have two floating shelves that contain uh, random products, which we'll get into. And then the desk has all of my lipsticks and then the two drawers that are you can't see are um, blush, highlighter, bronzer, but I'll pull those ones out and we'll talk about those as well. All right, so this area contains mostly brushes. This one over here has all of my more fine pointed brushes. Anything where I wanna do detail work, I reach for stuff in this cup. This one is more eyeshadow brushes and stuff I use on the daily. Um, I've got some very blue tinted brushes right now because I just did my Mystique costume for Comic-Con. Uh, so there's some really gunky ones in here right now. This is a disaster, but this has a mix of concealer, lip primers, mascara, um, more concealer back there, mostly Mary Kay, MAC, uh, Too Faced, and a collection, uh, previously collection 2000. There's also a glitter liner back here by Urban Decay. And I think that about rounds up this one. All right, so this floating shelf is also stuff that I use in your daily. I keep my eye primers really handy right here. I'm currently using a Jessie's Girl one. Uh, there's an Art Deco one in here. Uh, these are actually Inglot samples. One's a foundation, one's an eye primer. And then this is an Annabelle primer as well. This is the MAC Quad that I'm trying desperately to use up. I love these shadows, but like I need to move them out of my collection. So this one is Cork. You see me using that all the time. Blanc type. Um, that is, oh man. That one is Naked Lunch and then all that glitters. I have a Inglot Durline here, some Sephora blotting powders, this Hourglass Ethereal Light Powder, which I'm trying my damnedest to finish up. I don't enjoy this thing at all, but I want to get my money's worth out of it because it was expensive. I have a Depotted Max lipstick that just kind of broke on me and I wanted to keep, so I'm keeping that there. I have a Wet n Wild Single Eyeshadow, which is very close to my brow bone shade, so I use that all the time, and a small setting powder in case I need it. I'm not much of a powder person though. And then this e.l.f. Daily Moisture Stick. All right, so moving on to the top of the table. This container here has all of my eyebrow products. So I've got some eyebrow gels. These are NARS and Inglot. And then mostly it's like pencils and um, these sort of like brow mascaras that I'm not hugely into, but I keep them on the off chance that I will use them. Uh, there's a ton in here right now because I suddenly inherited a ton of them from PR and from friends So I'm trying to work my way through them over here is the bulk of my lipsticks all of these containers This one has all of my Mac as well as the limited edition ones uh, This one's a Clarins one. I have a lot of Rimmel ones my Maybelline lipsticks are back here as well as the Revlon color burst ones No super lustrous. These are fantastic I've also got my Wet n Wild lipsticks here, a NARS, another MAC, and then two Urban Decay ones, as well as a Bourgeois one. I love these. Of course, I have my huge obsession with the Too Faced Melteds. I have nearly every shade. Can't say enough good things about these. Back here, I have the Too Faced Grand Hotel Cafe. Yes, Grand Hotel Cafe. Uh, this is one of those little sets that I thought was cute and I didn't really want to throw them out. The three palettes are back here, so I just keep them like that. Back here, I keep some of my smaller palettes. This is mostly Wet n Wild. I've got some Charlotte Tilbury here as well, um, some NARS duos, and then some of the older Maybelline four pan shadows. This one has anything that seemed to be taller, <laughs> which is kind of ridiculous, but it's anything that stands upright a little bit more. So I've got one ColourPop, some Maybelline. This one is an Aster one. I got that in Europe. I've got some of the Lise Watsi ones, these ones by Tarte, which are fantastic, but the packaging is crap on them. So weird how that worked out. Uh, I've got some, let's see, Smashbox lipsticks. Love those as well. Not enough people talk about them. And then I have a lot of these um, Clinique, like, they're not ColourPop, but they're, they're all pop on the end. Pop glaze. There we go. 
And this one is a mini Kat Von D lipstick. Then I have all of my liquid lipsticks in this container. This is anything that dries down on your lips, pretty much, I think. Oh, except for the Makeup Forever Artist Acrylics. These don't go super matte. But I have the Too Faced Melted Mattes in here. I have some of the NYX Liquid Suede. Um, I have a lot of these mini Kat Von D Everlasting Liquid Lipsticks. These are fantastic. I am so happy with these mini sets because I just don't go through lipsticks very often. And the Smashbox Chill Zone Liquid Lipstick. I'm not a huge fan of these formulas. I think they're overly drying, but I wanted to keep this gray shade because it's fantastic. Over here, I have a really dirty sponge. I just use this for my Mystique look. Obviously, it's blue. I have uh, all of my Too Faced La Creme lipsticks in here. I have a bunch of Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks, as well as my NARS ones. This one's a mini, but I have some full-size ones down here as well. Swinging you over, I have a cup here that is basically just cotton rounds, Q-tips, and then there are some sponges that I'm about to start using as well as my Bioderma, my cell solution, I always have this handy. Okay, this container here has my bigger brushes. <laughs> Very blue, Mystique, <laughs> again. Uh, this is anything that's a face brush, except for this one, which should not be there. So, uh, I've got a pair of scissors, because I always need something handy to cut like eyelashes or something, a pair of eyelash curlers, and that's it for the brushes, really. I don't find brushes that interesting, to be honest. All right, these two cups in front are products that I'm currently testing out. This cup on the left is always stuff that I bought or was given by a friend and want to use and try it out. This one on the right is stuff that's been sent to me by PR and I'm still testing it out. There's a lot in here right now, which tends to drive me crazy. I don't like when I've got too much on the go. Uh, of course, I have the peanut butter and honey palette. Back here, I have some backup Real Techniques Miracle Complexion sponges. Always have those handy. These are my setting sprays. I don't keep a whole lot because I don't really use them that often. I have Quo. This one is a Maybelline one and then a Wet n Wild one. This over here is my primer container. So I got a bunch of Makeup Forever. So I've got Quo, Joe Fresh, Charlotte Tilbury, and some Laura Geller ones. This container back here is all of my backups. So this is a backup empty Inglot pan for my eyeshadows, should I ever get more, which I know I will. This is like a lip liner, some lash glue, glitter primer, eyeshadow primer, everything that I just don't need right away, but will need in the future. This container back here was from a MAC collection, um, one of the holiday ones. I just keep my pencil sharpeners in here. Got a random Art Deco golden bronze drops here. All right, and lastly on top, I have this container. This has all of my bite lipsticks right here. I have some of my pencils that I use for my looks, like um, a white base. I keep those handy. This one's a black one. I keep all my liquid liners in this little area here, and then my pencil liners are back here. All right, this back here is my lip pencils, and I am not a lip pencil person. I'm sure you can tell, because I only have two of them. They are both by MAC. I think a red is necessary, because red lip color can be really messy. And the only reason I have this one is because it was used for me on my wedding day. So I kept that. <laughs> I have some of the Becca Slim Lights back here. Those are great. And then some shadow sticks as well as other liquid liners that are potentially in colors that I just don't use that often. Um, I have one of the Lancome Juicy Shakers. This is the blue green one. Uh, they don't do a whole lot. They are hydrating, but like this color doesn't come off on your lips at all. Then I have two NARS multiples back here. One is like a red shade and the other one's kind of like a shimmery purple. In front, I keep my gel liners. I've got one by Inglot and one by MAC right now. I've got the paint stick I use for Mystique in here as well. And then the RCMA no color powder because this thing is incredible. And then a bunch of glitter glosses that I really enjoy. This Tints and Sass by Elizabeth Mott is probably one of the best cheek stains I have ever used. The color is gorgeous. I've got some duo minis down here. These are duo double ended ones. Uh, a Benefit What's Up highlighter. Love that one. And then back here I've got my NYX butter glosses as well as some of the Too Faced ones. I've got some of the Inglot duochrome ones. These ones are crazy. All right, so there's the overview of the entire area. As you can see, I've got quite a few things on top, but they're mostly organized. But now we're gonna go through these two drawers, but I'm gonna pull them out to make it much easier to see. This is my blush and glitter and other things drawer. I've got everything, I'm not gonna go through every shade, but I've got everything from Too Faced here. These are some Quo blushes here. This is a Sleek palette. I've got some NYX, 
Revlon hard candy, which you can't even get this one anymore. This one's great though. I've got some Essence blushes back here. Then the old Wet n Wild ones back when they used to make them like this. I've got a ton of Tarte here. They are one of my favorite blush brands. This Clinique Cola Pop, which is another amazing shade. I've got a Bobbi Brown apricot color here. Two Urban Decay ones. This is an, two Illamasqua shadows as well. Sorry, blushes. Fantastic quality. I've got a Smashbox palette in here. I need to show this one because it's so gorgeous. Oh, love it. The Tarte Mini from the Birthday Gift. My MAC blushes are all here. The Hourglass um what's this one diffused heat this is one of my absolute favorite ones and i've got a cargo one back here not because i use it so much but i feel like the color is very unique i don't have anything else like this and there's some gold reflect in it really pretty over here i have my becca blushes i've got some essence ones i've got the milani rose blushes these things are enormous like look how big that is in comparison to other blushes i've got two of my nars blushes right here then i've got the burberry poppy what is this one poppy it's like cheek bloom this thing is lovely so so pretty some more Becca ones down here. I've got a MAC cream one, the Laura Geller Sorbet ones, which I don't even think you can get anymore. I don't know why they don't exist. I've got an Australis one back here, and then the Hourglass um, three pan blush palette. All right, back here is anything that is sort of pigments or glitters. I have a whole bunch of MAC pigments and glitters back here. These Reflex ones are some of the best glitters on the market. And then a bunch of random colors just for whatever, you know, kind of mood I'm in. I want a different glitter, I got it. I have some, I think this is by Ben Nye. Yeah, Fresh Scab Blood. This stuff is fantastic for Halloween. I have some random jewels, I think from Mike's Michael's Craft Store, super handy. Lit glitter here to deal with all of my lit glitters over here. I'm gonna tilt this up. I, ooh, okay. Ah, too much. All my lit glitters are back here. I love those things so, so much. And then this is a, an Inglot Cream Concealer in white. Very handy for a lot of Halloween sort of makeup looks. This one is a bunch of other glitter rhinestones. And then I have two Naked Cosmetics Pigment Stacks. This one is like the tropical one, and then this is the Ivory Nude. No, Ivory Stack, but it reflects duochrome colors. I have two Inglot pigments back here. These are great, but the packaging is awful on these. Then I have a bunch of cream colored bases from NYX. I use these for Halloween. And then the Makeup Forever Flash Palette, which is absolutely fantastic. You can make so many creative makeup looks out of this thing. And then another one I bought at IMATS is kind of close to the Flash Palette, but I bought this before I got the Flash Palette. This is by um, Le Maquillage Professionnel, which is also called MAC Pro, but this is not like MAC Cosmetics. This is like M-A-Q. <laughs> All right, so that's it for this drawer. All right, then this is the last drawer I have to show you, and this has highlighters, bronzers, lashes, and then single or double eyeshadows. I'll start with bronzers because they're kind of split up. These are all the bronzers that I can use right now because they're pale enough for me. So I've got a bourgeois one. I've got the Butter Bronzer by Physicians Formula, which is my absolute favorite, which I'm sure you're aware of by now. I've got a, an NYC one. It looks like a Quo one here. Soap and Glory, a Body Shop one. And then this old Revlon one, which you can't get anymore. Love this thing though. And then an Essence one as well. The bronzers that are too dark for me live back here. I've got a bunch of Makeup Forever ones. This one is the Hard Candy Tiki. Nope, nope. Tiki is the highlighter. This is Hula Hula. Great bronzer. Too dark for me right now. MAC uh, Golden, Refined Golden. Bought this mostly because of the packaging. I have bought this bronzer before and finished it up, but I really wanted something in this packaging. I've got two newer Quo ones back here. This SST Cosmetics one, which is so like, Almost a no-name brand, but this bronzer is fantastic. And then I've got a Too Faced, um, what is this guy? Sweetheart's bronzer. Love this, but it's too dark. And I should say that these will all work for me in the summer. They're just too dark for me right now. Over here is all of my highlighters. The bulk of them are MAC. I've got a bunch of limited edition mineralized skin finish ones. This is from the Future MAC collection. I've got the one that everyone is obsessed with. And it's kind of funny because this is um, Whisper of Guilt and it's gorgeous. 
But guys, it is not worth the hype that everyone makes this one out to be. It's just a gold highlighter. It's beautiful, but you don't need to be spending like the hundred dollars that this thing goes for on eBay. <laughs> My first ever one was soft and gentle, as I think it was most people's. Oh, that's a lie. I have this, <sighs> this is old, okay. This is Silver Dusk. It's in totally busted up packaging. This is by MAC. They don't make it in this kind of packaging or even at all anymore. This stuff is incredible. And uh, yeah, this is probably from 1999. Got a bunch of Becca ones here, love those as well as the Make It Forever ones. Then I got another MAC one here. This one, I don't talk about this one too much because this was this collection was kind of kind of a bit of a mess, but this one's okay. I've got the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow, love that. Two Too Faced ones here. The Essence Pure Nude Highlighter, love that one. And then the um, Hard Candy, this one is the Tiki. And then this one is a Dior Amber Diamonds. Does anybody remember when YouTube went nuts for this thing? It was years ago, but no one talks about it anymore. <laughs> Back here are all of my lashes. My favorite brands are definitely House of Lashes. I have a ton of those. They just really, really fit my eye shape really nicely. And then uh, the Esquito ones are ones that I am falling in love with so, so much. They are super expensive, but so lovely. And then the ones I'm hoping that I will like just as much as Esquito are the Huda Beauty Lashes. I just haven't gotten around to wearing these ones yet, which is kind of frustrating. But uh, the Esquito ones are lasting so well that I haven't had to try the Huda Beauty ones yet. I've got this ridiculous pair of NYX ones. I don't know how I'm ever going to wear these. I think these would just be super uncomfortable, but I'll give them a shot at some point. All right, and in the middle are all of my eyeshadows that are not in palettes. I have a ton of the L'Oreal Infallibles because they are excellent quality. I have a bunch of just, this is a Kat Von D one down here. I've got another Kat Von D one. This is Thunderstruck. Everyone went crazy for this one. I have all of my Makeup Geek duochrome pigments here. I've already pressed these as individual shadows and they are my Makeup Geek palettes. So I don't really need to have these on display where they're easily visible. I have some Lise Watsier ones here as well. Um, this is one of these MAC Star Trek collection ones. I have a bunch of MAC. These are so old, but they were so nice. These were like the original mineralized eyeshadows. Then I have some Make It Forever here, ColourPop ones. I don't really like ColourPop's texture is just really not great, but I love those shadow colors so much that I just kept them. I've got a Kryolan one. This is UV Red. This thing is incredible. And then just a few Essence. I've got an H&M Red back here, and then the... Annabelle Chrome Shadow. All right, so that's it for my 2017 makeup collection video. I hope you've enjoyed seeing all the products I have and the way that I store them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.